Today guys, uh, here for another episode of Design Theater. Today we're going to be looking at the concept art for Silent Hill. Uh, we're going to be specifically looking at the concept artist Mashiro Aito. I believe that's how you pronounce his name. Uh, so just a warning for those that are not aware. The concept art that this guy does, it can be pretty brutal sometimes. So if that's not something that you're into, then I would recommend not to watch this. Uh, if you're not into like the horror art, uh, I don't think he really gets not. I don't think he gets to a point where it's not safe for work, but uh, it's not. But it is something that that can be pretty brutal. So anyway, we're gonna go through these real quick. We're gonna take a look at his work because I'm a huge fan of his. Uh, Silent Hill is one of the most interesting franchises that's come out in gaming, in my opinion. I have a, a friend of mine who has a YouTube channel where he goes through and he pretty much breaks down all of the symbolism in the Silent Hill games. And so I'm going to actually include that as a link. His name is Reinstall Paul. If you're into Silent Hill, I would definitely recommend that you take a look at his videos because he he really goes through the whole series and breaks down like the symbolism and whatnot so it's very interesting stuff something that you can learn learn from other artists is always important so with this piece what I really like about this this is one of the main villains in Silent Hill it's basically the personification of the guilt of the main character in Silent Hill 2 and I love the way that he represented this as this pyramid on the head of of this figure. It it makes it feel very enigmatic. It makes it feel like there's there's some sort of emotion there that you can't really read. Um, and it reminds me of something like H.R. Geiger or something like that. Uh, in Silent Hill 2, I think like one of the prevalent theories is the idea that James has killed himself and he's living through his own through his own nightmare as he's as he makes his way to hell because Silent Hill is a it's a pretty dark uh, horror game um, so this is kind of like his tormentor this is his this is his shadow and his his name is Pyramid Head right so the design is just really crazy looking this is some of the other stuff. I don't know if this was for Silent Hill, um, but definitely kind of in that same style, right? This is some of his personal work. I think this is for like a personal project that he's doing. Again, I love the pen and ink stuff. This stuff just feels like a, it feels like some sort of a comic book to me. You know, like a panel out of a comic book. It looks like somebody who maybe sells weapons or something like that is carrying around a, a payload. Again, this is another concept art piece from something he does for his own personal work. Yeah. There's a lot of storytelling going on in some of these pieces. This is a this is one of the one of my favorite pieces right here of his. Because this feels very much like Pyramid Head in a sense, you know. Like he has this way of replacing the faces of his characters with these inanimate objects and somehow they convey emotion, but then at the same time that emotion always feels like it's just out of our grasp. Like, what am I supposed to feel from this? Is, am I supposed to feel the horror of the way it is that technology has overtaken people? Or am or is there a sense of adventure here? Is there a sense of excitement as well? Uh, you know, like his take on what it means for us to have this symbiotic relationship with technology and the way that he represents it is really interesting. You know, you can tell that he's inspired by Geiger and other people that do like the biomechanical designs, but he has his own way of doing it. This is another example of that same thing, right? You've got this astronaut and he's got this mask on 
and then we have these tubes that are going into the mask, but we don't know what it is that they're going into. So his stuff has kind of, it kind of has this otherworldly hallucinatory aspect to it because everything else looks so normal. And then we have this element that is just completely uh, enigmatic, right? Yeah. Again, masks. The same sort of thing, you know. His his characters seem to be losing their humanity. That's a good face right there. Yeah. Very cool stuff. Yeah, so I will include the links to his to his social media and whatnot in the description below. I think that's pretty much all it is that I got for today on this one. Uh, thanks, guys, for watching. I hope you like this guy's work. I'm going to continue to expand and experiment with covering comics and, and other artists, other people. So uh, thanks, and uh, you have a good day.